All right, Jennifer's in the house. Uh, do you put your camera on, Jennifer? Please put your camera on because we, uh, here we go. Jennifer. Howdy. Howdy. Have you been on before? No, but I paid you like seven months ago. <laughs> oh, I worked with you? Yeah, for a one-off. Sorry, okay, I was okay. planning on doing this, so don't everyone excuse uh, my face and um, okay. my nervousness. Well, but quickly, was I a good coach? Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove you right now if I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you absolutely were. Um, yeah, uh, it provided the perspective and the clarity that I needed to kind of go forward with what I was in, which we're about okay. to talk about. Um, and so wait, so, so what do you want to talk about? Let's get into the nitty gritty. Yeah. So, um, when we spoke, uh, I had been seeing someone for just a couple months and now we are okay. nine months in, um, oh. we are doing fantastic. Um, everything is great, but one thing, um, okay. he has never been in love. Okay. And, um, I have, <laughs> okay. I am, um, and he's, we're very, like, we talk about this openly. He's talked about okay. his fears surrounding this, um, okay. but I'm, and I have a therapist and my therapist is like, everything's good. You should keep going, et cetera, et cetera. But I guess there's still just a little, like, 5% nervousness that I yeah. have about, yeah. about it. Um, cause I feel like at nine months you should kind of know, but maybe you don't know. And if you've never known, then yeah. <laughs> no, this is an interest. This is a great question. So I appreciate let's, let's unpack this and, and pick it apart. You know, um, I believe there's a significant percentage of the population that doesn't know what it means, what it what it means to love or what it means to be in love. And I do believe there's a difference between being in love versus loving someone. And, and what I mean to say is we love our children, we love our parents, we love our pets, but being in love has a deeper connotation to it. In my, my opinion, it means I'm all in. Mm -hmm. It means I'm here for you when you need me. It means you matter to me. It means our relationship is important to me. It means I've got your back. It means I'm not going anywhere. And it means I only want you in the bedroom. So that's what it means to me. That's my narrative. Now, he might actually feel all those feelings for you. So my, my suspicion is that he most likely has a difficult time receiving love. So let's start with how he actually, if, are you in love with him? Yes. And you're, I guess the reason why I was like, for the moment, yeah, let's talk about this is because your perspective on love is very similar to my own. And okay. I've experienced the whirlwind romance kind of BS. Yeah. And I know that this is different because it's more, um, it's, it's truly rooted in security and safety and just knowing each other, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, so. But why are you in love with him? <laughs> Let me count the ways. No. Um, by the way, who, uh, by the way, can I interrupt is. you for a second? Yeah. If, and, and I want you to still process what I just said. But, you know, it's it fascinates me that oftentimes we, we, we have this feeling about it, but we haven't written it down on a piece of paper. Like, I'm inviting you to after this, you know, after you're reciting it to me, to write it down on a piece of paper, like the reasons why you genuinely have strong care for him. Um, so share with me why you're in love with him. So it's who he is um, at his core, like who he is as a person, the kind of things that he values we're very similar on. Um, there is, of course, how he treats me and makes me feel. That's that is a part of it. Um, okay. but it's most, it's mostly just, we just connect so well. We just, we talk about anything and everything. Um, he's totally accepting. He's totally supportive. I just, I truly feel like my life is better okay. having known him. Okay. Um, 
wherever this may end up (laughs) and not because like I rely on him or anything, but just because I truly feel like there's a partnership. Okay. And so I, just, I, I appreciate him and respect him as a person and as a man as well. Okay. Okay. So you've asked, so let's talk about your conversations about love together. Like, like, has he said, I'm not in love with you? I mean, what has he actually said? He said, he said that he doesn't know what love is, like how be, falling in love is supposed to feel, but he thinks it's supposed to be the whirlwind, obsession, all these okay. lovely things. Um, he has a very large group of friends, all, all of which who are married, um, many who are Mormon, and yeah. they've all like fell in love and they're like, no, 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 that wasn't love. So he talks to his friends about this quite regularly as well. Um, and he said that so many of the things that he said when he's talked about, like how he feels about me to me is love. And so I think that's really the thing that throws me off is like, you know, last he's been dealing with some health issues, um, and he, he can hardly walk. So he was supposed to come over yesterday and, um, he ended up canceling on me and understandably. Um, and he's like, But then when we were talking later, he's like, you know, I just should have come up. I really miss you. You make me feel so much better. Um, And he was, you know, he's like, it's like you cast a spell on me. And I was like, funny, haha. But I was like, to me, that's what he's saying. But he's not saying it. So. Well, so I have a theory that some. So. Okay, let's let's go down this rabbit hole for a second. So a lot of people expect to have butterflies in the stomach, right? Like that's an indication of love or that we are looking for a person and that's love or we we put them up on a pedestal and that's love. Well, lust is purely biology. Okay, lust is purely biology. Um Limerence is putting someone up on a pedestal, you know, making them out better than yourself. And butterflies in the stomach is oftentimes an anxious uh, uh, experience because there is an energetic mismatch between people. And this, all of this actually can stem from our childhood wounds and our traumas and how we perceive love. So, okay, let's just put that in a box for a second. I think. He's well. Has he have he, has he ever been excited about a woman in the past? Has he ever had like? Has he said he's ever been in love before? You said I don't think you said he's ever been in love before, right? No, so, he said the closest would have been his high school girlfriend. Okay, and we're you know we're in a state of of, of so many hormones at in high school that you know I don't think we can quantify it to the same degree as we can adult. I think. Mo, uh, many humans haven't experienced genuine love, just genuine heart-centered love. And when they have, they're confused because it doesn't fit into the narrative of like Disney and movies and perceptions that we have, as well as our, 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 you know, love attachment style and our, our, you know, you know, our, what's known as a mago, which is healing from our parental wound out there. So I think there's a significant percentage of humans who just don't really know what love is. So let's start with how he gives love. I mean, you said he gives love in abundance. So I'm going to throw out a conversation for you that you sh- might want to have with him. And I was just having this conversation with a dear friend of mine. He's a big brain like Sam Harris or uh, Jordan Peterson. I have a friend who's on that level of intellect. And we were having an intellectual conversation about an emotional experience. And he reminded me that to, to, and we both agreed that the essence of love is gratitude. Like, when you can be in an absolute space of appreciation for another human being, when you can be in an absolute space of gratitude, when you can be grateful this person is in your life and if they were gone, it w- you would be miserable. That to me is love. 
Like that to me is the epitome of love. So you may want to introduce into your conversations a regular practice of expressing appreciation for one another. He actually does that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, not to throw your game off, but no, yeah. no. This is why I'm speaking to everybody. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know. So let's let's. So he demonstrates appreciation. Continue. He does. Um, both of us do, partly because you talk about it so much, but he does it in general. It, it is also part of the Mormon culture, um, okay. so that it also comes from that as well. But he is always very appreciative um, in, <laughs> um, I mean, almost every time he comes over, he thanks me for making dinner and for, you know, whatever it is that we did together or what have you. So... And then, of course, well, just thanks me for his, like, with his health issues right now, um, support, um, things of that nature. So. so, you know, I'm having this funny reaction that I want to offer to you. And it reminds me of the movie um, Moonstruck, which with Cher and Nicolas Cage. And, and she just slaps him across the face and says, snap out of it. Like, you're fucking in love with me. Just stop it and own it kind of thing. Like. And take your top off when you say it. So he's looking at your boobs and you can <laughs> laugh at each other. But just say, would you just fucking own that you're in love with me and just let go of this narrative? Um, I, I say this a little tongue in cheek, but I, I, I mean to say that you can have conversations about what love means to you. And you can share my meaning, which you said mirrors your own meaning. You can share this with them and say, this is what love means to me. This is what being in love means to me. But more importantly, this is how it feels for me. This is how it feels for me. I'm here, meaning I'm present to this experience. You matter. This means I'm putting you at the same pedestal that I, you know, like the same park bench. You know, you, you matter. You're on the same park bench with me. We are important. That means I treat this relationship with a fair amount of respect and, and protectiveness of this relationship when I say we are important. I've got your back. Look, I'm going through some medical issues. I'll be there for you. You'll be there for me. We're, we've got each other's back. I'm not going anywhere. Look, I'm committed. You can't get rid of me unless you really fuck up, okay? You, I'm, I'm into this, you know? Like, you'd have to be a real fucking jackass. Or, or a bitch for me to leave. Um, and I only want you, meaning I love fucking you. Sorry, no one appreciates when I say the F word, but I'm like, look, I like making love to you. You're the one I like. I get my orgasms from you, you know? To me, when you're both experiencing that, when you're both in a place of being givers and generous with one another and capable of receiving, my suspicion is, he just needs a smack upside the head and like, ah, you're in love with me. Just stop. Just own it. I mean, you could try it anyway. Um, I, I have thought about, <laughs> I almost said that last night to respond to his thing about, you know, you cast a spell on me, but I was like, ah, it just seems like you really like me. <laughs> yeah. You know, but like I thought I mean, about it. It crossed my mind. <laughs> now, now it's important not to, you know, if there was some real, you know, you haven't given me one clue that suggests that he's a danger. The topic of this video is, you know, is about dangerous men. You know, he's, it doesn't sound like a dangerous man. So, no, sorry, I jumped like, in after your after. Okay, your that's okay. Opening, so. uh, by the way, Sue says, "I love it when you say the f bombs." I appreciate that. So, anyway. I think you're doing great. I'm happy for you. I'm so happy. And I apologize. I now have my memory banks is I remember our conversation now. By the way, really quickly, folks who are watching this video, I offer a one-time coaching session when you're in relationship with a man to kind of bounce off, you know, your experience with me. You're hiring me for my perspective. And in this case, Jennifer, I gave you my perspective and it looks like, you know, the advice I passed on to you has led you from months ago being a fledgling relationship to now a full-grown relationship. So it sounds like you were happy with my advice. It definitely helped me um, let go of some of the fears that I had that would have definitely sabotaged okay. a good thing. 
So, well, for everyone watching, there's a link right here that says jonathanasley.com forward slash slow coaching. There's a link below. You can get this one time coaching session. And believe me, peace of mind is something you can't buy. Jennifer, can I reach into the camera and give you a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug? Do I get one back? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for being on. We appreciate you. Oh, I love that conversation. So folks, you know, for a lot of men, they haven't really experienced deep love with another, with a woman or with anybody. And for that matter, I, I mean, I'm speaking to a heterosexual population, but um, a lot of women haven't experienced deep love and they don't know what it is. What Jennifer shared with us is not an uncommon thing. You know, to me, honest, open communication is how we connect with each other at a deeper level. But most importantly, I believe gratitude is a powerful force of love when you can actually be in a state of appreciation for another human being, being in your life, and you, you can't vision not having them in your life on a regular basis. That, to me, is the epitome of being in love. And my hope is her relationship continues to flourish. And again, if you want some support with that, you want to find, you know, you want to bounce that off of me, schedule a discovery call with me. There's a link below as well. Okay. So thank you, Jennifer, again, big gigantic hugs of appreciation.